Это мое свадебное платье. Нравится? Приятное, но простенькое. Брэндону понравилось. Извини, но я не в восторге. Почему? Излишне простое. Ты красивая женщина и должна блистать на своей свадьбе. Я попробую подыскать другое. Но до свадьбы осталось совсем немного. Боюсь, у меня не будет времени для примера. Я знаю, как решить этот вопрос. Смотри, что я принес. Это платье Иден. Думаю, она не будет возражать. Боже, она шила это платье на свадьбу с Крузом. Да нет, она надевала его на выпускной вечер. Мейсон, я видела это платье. Мама показывала. Иден попросила подшить его перед свадьбой. Ты уверена? А мне казалось, я видел ее в нем. Извини. Неважно, забудем обо всем. Used to be up until a couple of months ago when the premiums went up and I fell behind on my payments. Oh, man. Yeah. The joke's on me all the way around, Cruz. I was going to sell everything today. I could have gotten maybe $3,000 for a lot of it. You were going to sell your darkroom equipment? I need the cash so I can buy my book back from the publisher. Tomorrow it goes up on the auction block. Thank you. I'm sorry. Do you think that we can recover any of the stolen stuff? I mean, I've got the serial numbers. Well, we can run it by Pearl. He usually knows what's happening on the street. Why didn't you call me right away? I did. The detective who came said that you were in Hawaii for a couple of days. Yeah, it was actually just one day, and I got back late last night. By the way, I hope you've kept that information to yourself. Yeah. I also know that Eden was there. Kelly said it was a business trip, but it happened so suddenly, I was wondering if something happened between her and Kirk. No. The problem here is with me, man. Uh, I've never known when to quit. And I've had to learn real fast. All right, let's have a little rehearsal. I'll be Eden. What's the point, Gina? Be prepared. Our motto, remember? All right, so you've got this all figured out, huh? No. Haven't you? Oh, I see. You've decided to just turn Eden over to Cruz, is that it? Bow out gracefully like a gentleman. Well, bravo, Kurt. Shut What up. a guy. What's the matter? I'm sorry. Did I make the wrong guess? All right. You want to rehearse? It's rehearsal time. And you get to play Eden. So I'm stuck playing Kirk. How about this for a situation, Gina? Let's say that you just received a message from Cruz that uh, he wants to meet you here. So why don't you go out that door, come back in, and expect to find him, all right? Are you ready, Eden? Ready as I'll ever be. Oh, Kirk, uh, what are you doing here? Oh, sweetheart, what are you doing? I just came here to meet a business associate. Strange place for a business meeting. Well, he wants the deal to be kept a big secret. Drop it, Eden. I know for a fact that you got a note from Cruz telling you to be here. All right, so I did. But I was only coming here to tell him that I never want to see him again, that I want him to just leave me alone and stay away from me. You're a liar. I mean it. I love you. You're the only man I've ever loved, and Cruz doesn't mean anything to me. You've got to believe me. I'm telling you. And you're a tramp. Daddy wouldn't like it if he heard you talk to me like that. Well, baby doll, Daddy isn't here right now. He'd probably demote you to errand boy, but you're not much more than that as it is. Stay away from me. Cruz is going to be coming any minute. I, the note said 11. I wrote the note, Edie. Cruz knows nothing about it. Wait a minute. You are hurting me, Kirk. Just admit it. Admit it, Eden. That you want to do this. That you came running over here because you just couldn't wait to be with him. Admit it. All right, I admit it. I admit it. I, I love Cruz. I've always loved Cruz. And, and I never wanted you. You disgust me. Kirk. Will it, Kirk? Oh, my God. I'm going to show you that I am a much better lover than he is, Gina. I'm going to show you what it is that you're throwing away. And then, then, I'm going to kill you. Is you out of your mind? Oh, now, what's wrong, Gina? I thought you wanted a little rehearsal here. I don't want that kind of rehearsal. No? Oh, yeah, that's right. We don't want to do it that way. No, there is a much better way. 
a much better way in which you'll become a more active participant this time. Comprende, Gina? I think so. Man, my advice. Yeah. You, which I know you didn't ask for, is that you should put your images into replacing your cameras first so that you can take more pictures. And forget about the boat? Follow it under experience. Can't do that, Cruz. That book is like a child. Kelly's my first child. I mean, we put so much love and commitment into that. There will be others. No, not like this one. Besides, I, I know it's going to be a winner. It's going to make a profit. Um, Cruz, uh, a few days ago, the subject of a loan came up. And yeah, I, I know it did. I wonder if you'd be disposed at all to borrowing a few thousand dollars against your house in the bank. Um, I'd pay it back within two months and be with interest. Hey, Nikki, I would do it in a minute, except that my house is going on the market in a minute. Why? I've submitted my resignation, effective next week. I don't know where I'm going yet, but I'm definitely leaving town before he even gets back, even if the house hasn't sold by then. Cutting my losses. I understand. I'm not going to like it. I'm not going to like it at all. I'll miss you, Cruz. Same here, buddy. Listen, I appreciate it. Keep this under your hat, too. Yeah. Ah, come on, let's get out of here, huh? These bare walls are getting to me, huh? Okay. Yeah, will you just remind him of our lunch date, please? All right, thanks. Are you making dates behind my back? <laughs> my last official obligation to the casino. I have lunch today with Kirk and Dylan, then I'm a free woman again. Not entirely. Free. Well, I think that sounds like my cue to leave. I hope I see you two at the wedding rehearsal tonight. Mm -hmm. okay. We'll see you. Bye. Bye, Chris. Bye bye. What do you say? The expert says that I will probably never see my photographic paraphernalia again. All right, Nikki, I know what you're going to say, but I want to replace this for you. Kelly, no. Now, come on, I know how proud you are, so pay me back if you want to, but you need your camera stuff what? to do your work. You... All right, don't, no. Arguing, no. I have made up my mind. You didn't give me a chance to tell you. It's all been taken care of. I've got the money for the new equipment and to get the books back. Where? How? how? It's, a, it's a personal loan from a friend. Cruise? Yes, Cruise. It is. Well, good. Just uh, keep it to yourself, all right? I won't tell anybody. Uh, will you forgive me? What? For barging in and acting like you couldn't solve the wrong problem. Just give me a little while, learn. <laughs> Will you be having lunch today, Mr. Hartley? Absolutely, Mark. And the reservation is under Capwell Enterprises. I'm a little early. Okay. Mark, do me a favor and make sure that the bill is brought to me at the end of the meal. And put a bottle of your best champagne on ice for me. Certainly, sir. Oh, one other thing. Uh, could we take some lunch up to my pilot? He's at the hill port. Thanks. You're very welcome, Mr. Harley. I'll take you to your table now. Thank you. Harley said two words to me the whole way over here. What would you like me to say? That you're not angry? Did you know I didn't give you Eden's wedding dress on purpose? That even I'm not that cruel? I'm not angry, and I know you didn't do it on purpose. Now, I'd like to just stop talking about it. Okay. We'll get you a nice, elegant wedding dress all your own. No, I'm going to wear the dress that I picked out. Except for that, we'll go along with whatever you want. Out of docility or indifference? Don't answer that. Where's Mark? I have to talk to him. And I need a drink. Not necessarily in that order. You're going to have to pay for this blouse, Kirk. You know that, don't you? Well, that's a small price to pay, Gina. For what was a terrific performance. You know something? Rehearsing was a great idea of yours. Wonderful. I thought so, too, until you started playing Jack the Ripper on me. Well, it seemed right in the character of a, a jealous husband. After all, that's what I am, right? Why don't you save it for the appropriate time and place? You don't want to end up with the wrong dead woman on your hands, do you? You know something, Gina? A betrayed spouse sometimes thinks about, even schemes about, murder. But rarely do they really follow through with it. You're not going to back out on me, are you? No. I intend to be one of the exceptions. Look, I have to go right now. Tell you what, meet me at the Capo Hotel at 6 p.m. I'll be waiting for you in the garage. You know my car. What for? I'm going to take you on a little drive, Gina. A little drive where? I'm going to be upstairs at Mason and Santana's wedding rehearsal. 
All right. That's enough of an excuse to slip away. That's what you meant about a better way. We'll talk about it later. Just be there. And um, flowers on all the tables, of course. Santana, is there any particular flower you would like? Well, whichever you choose will be fine. I'm marrying an accommodating woman, Mark. It's a rare thing these days. Yes, it is, Mr. Capwell. And then the bachelor party after the rehearsal dinner? Yes, yes. I'd like a large cake wheeled in with a scantily clad young woman ready to pop out from inside. Don't look so shocked, Mark. I'm joking. Though my uh, fiancé wouldn't mind if I weren't. Would you, darling? Hello. Hi. Kirk here yet? I thought he was coming with you. Well, I was going to pick him up, but I couldn't reach him. He hasn't forgotten. Oh, I'm sure he'll be along in a minute. Anyway, this will give us a few moments to gab. Champagne? No. How's Nick? Fine. Did he get the money together to buy the book from the publisher yet? Uh, yes, he has. Oh, that's good. I'm sorry that he felt compelled to tear up the check that I gave him. I really would have liked to have been a part of this book. Oh? Yeah, well, there's a section of it about brothers, and, well, Nick and I have shared a lot. Meaning me? We'll be making up the place card soon if you could give me the names of the wedding party. Certainly, Mark. My, um, my best man will be my brother, Theodore Capwell. The ushers will be Cruz Castillo, uh, Daniel Andrade, uh, Nicholas Hartley. The ring bearer is Brandon Capwell. Santana, whom did you invite? I haven't invited anyone, Mason. Well, I could lend you someone from my list. I don't think Danny would be a very good uh, bridesmaid. <laughs> I, I still think that we should keep the ceremony simple without anyone else invited. Not even a minister? That wouldn't be legal, would it? You know what I'm talking about, Mason. Yeah, I think I have some idea. Well, Mark, why don't you get started on those? I'll give you the other names shortly. All right, fine. What's the matter? Are you so uh, ashamed of this wedding that you don't you want your friends to witness it? I never said that. I just don't understand why you're so set on making such a big fuss about it. I have to keep reminding myself that you're the one who came to me and practically begged me to marry you. Just do whatever you want, Mason. You will anyway. I thought we agreed to make this a special occasion for Brandon's sake. It doesn't have to be a big production. He's not going to understand most of it anyway. No, but he'll know that it's important to us. And I get a chance to see the family uh, gathered for a happy occasion for a change. He might even get a chance to meet some of the eastern branch of the family. I invited them, you know. I remember meeting some of those relatives of yours when we were children. They were visiting. I never thought that they'd come back. No, they don't have much use for California. Borneo with sports cars, one cousin calls it. <laughs> but if they do show up, they're going to expect some kind of celebration for the eldest son's wedding. If you're doing all this to impress somebody I hardly know, please, why don't you just pick out my bridesmaids, too? <clears throat> all right. How about Mary Duvall as the maid of honor? It'd have to be matron of honor. She's Mary McCormick, remember? That's all fine with me. Start pulling people off the street, why don't you? <clears throat> yeah, I, uh, I just might do that. I just think you need a bigger audience for this sacrificial lamb routine. You do it so well, you know. But don't fret, Santana. I'll find you some bridesmaids one way or another. Excuse me, I need a refill. Ginger, this is Mason. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Yeah, I guess uh, some lucky girl was bound to get me sooner or later. Look, uh, I don't have time to chat now, Ginger, but I was wondering if you could send a couple of girls over to the Orient Express right away. They won't have to do anything but stand around and look thrilled. Good, perfect. Yeah, I'll uh, just put it on my credit card. Thanks, Ginger. That was fast. It sounded important. You know, only my entire future's at stake. A slight exaggeration. Come on in here. 
I saw Kelly before. She told me about the burglary. I'm sorry, Nick. Yeah, the timing was less than perfect. Hey, let me look at you. I want to see how you've changed. You're a big, important model. Okay. No. I didn't think it was possible. You're more gorgeous than ever. <laughs> well, that's what fame and fortune can do for a girl, I guess. I guess so. I guess so. You deserve every bit of happiness that comes your way. I'm so happy for you. Are you going to tell me what's wrong? <sighs> I'm stalling because this is kind of tough for me. Uh, I don't know, did Kelly tell you that uh, our book was canceled? Mm, made me angry, too. It was such a beautiful book. Yeah. Between that and the robbery, I'm in kind of a bind, financially. I've got to get some money together to buy them or I'm going to lose the books. And the, the, the bank is not going to give me a loan because I lost my photographic equipment. Maybe, I just... Maybe I can help you. How much is it that you need? It's a lot. Ten thousand dollars. I need a third of it by tonight. Now, I hate to ask you this, but I thought that since you were doing so well, and I'll pay you back quickly, and it'll be with interest, Jen. I can't give you ten thousand, but I can give you thirty-five hundred. Uh, most of it by check now, and the rest cash by six o'clock. Is that okay? Yeah, of course, that's okay. The immediate thing is the book. And now I'll be able to get it. My fair godmother. <laughs> <laughs> let me put my name down here, or they won't let you cash this, Cinderella. Thanks. You've made me a very happy man. Well, if I'm going to make you happier, I have to get home and then downtown before the stores close. I won't get my refunds. You just lost me. I bought a bunch of clothes yesterday that I don't really need. Since I worked at Buzz's, I went a little crazy. Buzz's place? It's part-time job. Why? I don't get it. Well, modeling was a little slow. Janice, I thought... I mean, I never would have done this. Why didn't you tell me? Nick, There's no way that I'm going to... I have a savings. I have a job. I was going to return the things anyway. Talk about taking your shirt off your back for a friend. Shame me. You're silly. You helped me when I was in need. You put me up here no, for no, weeks no, no, when no. I was in need. Now that was different. Why is that different? Listen, I'm not going to ask you for your entire life savings so I can avoid a few moments of being humiliated. What are you talking I about? have somewhere else that I can go for the money. Here. Thank you. You're a good friend. Are you sure? Because I really don't mind. I do. Come on, let's go. I don't want to put this off any longer. Uh, don't you have to get to the wedding rehearsal for Mason? All right, so well, I'm just going to have to be a little bit late, that's all. Thanks again. Bye. Let's see, uh, the bride and groom will sit here, and, uh, we'll keep this space clear for the aisle, okay? Dylan, where is the file on the dummy corporation? I just had it. No, it's, it's right here. Here's a quarterly financial report on Hartwell Investment Company, all in order. And look, these are the dividends that we will be distributing for AC. Kirk? Yeah. Kelly, the uh, Hartwell Incorporated report, right? I'm, I'm going to look at this very carefully. Well, I guess that's it, except for the closing ceremonies. Kirk, I'd like to officially welcome you. I think you're going to have a good time with this job. Well, Bill and I'm looking forward to it. And I'd like to officially thank Kelly. Without his ideas and hard work, there wouldn't even be a casino. Well, that's an understatement. No, not in the least. You're the one who talked to Eden and Nick and your dad and made them listen to me. You took a vision that was kind of swimming around in my head and put it down on paper so that someone else could understand it, without whom I would still be an itinerant pilot. Well, I'm glad I could be of some help. Will you both excuse me? I'll be right back. Sure. I'm going to miss you. I know it hasn't been really easy to work with me, but do you know how hard it's been for me to be so close to you? Knowing how I feel, remembering what I do? I told you to wait for me in my car. I got tired of hanging around the garage. You're late. I couldn't help it, you. Well, you're ready now. I'd like to know why I'm here. Let's go down to the car. I'll be right down there. Hi, handsome. We're here to be in the wedding party. Oh, well, the other members of the wedding party haven't arrived yet. If you wouldn't mind waiting near the bar, we'll let you, uh... Oh, good afternoon, sir. Are you here for the Capwell Andretti wedding 
rehearsal? Yes, I'm Reverend Fitzpatrick. Oh, Reverend, of course. Well, as I was just explaining, we haven't quite finished setting up the dining area. If you'd like to have a seat near the bar, we'll let you know when we're ready. You know, over there? Yes, you can just follow these uh, bridesmaids. Tina, what brings you here? Don't tell me they sent you down here to be one of the bridesmaids. Leave me alone, Macy. Aren't you going to wish me well on my upcoming nuptials? I'd be more likely to wish you dead. Ooh, venomous. What are we playing, the scorned mistress now, Gina? Or maybe the scorned bride. There was a time when you had visions of our tying the knot. Now I bet you'd like to tie it around my neck. You once liked me, Mason. And cared for me. Maybe you never loved me. How could you treat me this way? Easy, Gina. I never liked you half as much as I've come to hate you. I'd do most anything to keep Brandon out of your talent. In fact, I am doing most anything. You'll never know how much you cost me by going through with this marriage. Tell me. I need some cheering up. Go to hell, Mason. Inspector Castillo. Here for the festivities? That's right, hello, Kirk. Oh, well, you're looking very well. Thank you, excuse me. Very rested. Even uh, a little tanned, maybe. Been on a vacation? No, I haven't. Oh, that's odd. I heard you were out of town. I was. But not on a vacation. Well, must have been business. Must have been. Was it business or personal? Kirk, if you're trying to ask me whether or not I went to Hawaii to see Eden, the answer is yes, I did. Yeah, I, I knew that, Cruz. Eden told me. I doubt that very much. Well, how do you think I knew that? I think you're the one who phoned the other evening around dinner time, breathing heavily while I asked you who you were and then hung up like an obscene caller. Don't put me on the defensive, Castillo. You were sneaking off to my, see my wife. If I was sneaking, I wouldn't have answered the phone. Oh, what is this? It's all open and above and board now, huh? Well, what were you doing in her room, Cruz? Playing cards now that you're just friends? I was there to give her a message. What kind of message? A none of your damn business kind of message. But I got one for you, so you won't feel left out. If you don't do everything you can to make her happy, if you hurt her in any way, I'm gonna come after you wherever you are. And I'm going to wring your soft little neck. Excuse me. Reverend Fitzpatrick, I don't believe you met our lovely bridesmaids. Uh, no, Mason, I don't believe I have. That's all right. The bride hasn't either. <laughs> Pardon me? Not at all. <laughs> this is Ingrid, and this is Heather. No. <laughs> I've, I've got that backwards, Reverend. This is Heather, and this is Ingrid. <laughs> Well, you know, you know who you are, right? And this is Reverend Fitzpatrick, who's going to give Santana and me the benefits of the joint tax return next year. <laughs> right, Reverend? What's your first thought when you look at those girls? The police station. I think they were mixed up in the raid that I got caught up in. Well, you remember, you came down there to vouch for me. How could I forget? I was so nervous, I almost got myself arrested. Yeah. Ted, I think you're right. They were there. What are they doing here? That's what I'd like to know. Uh, well, you're not going to believe this, Danny, but Mason said that they are Santana's bridesmaids. That's a bad joke, well, right? Well, now, uh, well, <laughs> Mason, anything is possible. So, um, look, I know he's your brother, but if he does anything to hurt Santana or embarrass her, no, I, I, Danny, just cool down. I'll, I'll do my best to sit on him. Chris? Yeah. Mason asked me to be Santana's maid of honor of the world. I mean, I said yes, of course. Well, I'm glad. I don't get it. Why didn't she ask me herself? <sighs> well, you know, she's been in a bit of a daze lately. Tell you the truth. I don't get this whole wedding. Well, I hope it's going to make her happy, Kelly. You're so good to your friends, Cruz. I mean, you care. It's, it's beautiful. I've got great friends that are worth caring about. Yeah, and you also don't know how to take a compliment. But I'm going to tell you anyway that your friendship means so much to Nick and me. 
Well, you're both very special to me. You know that. You always will be. Listen, I'm going to check in with Rye for a second. If you'll excuse me. Okay. You mind some company? Oh, hello, Cruz. I'm so happy you could be here. You okay? Fine. Did you find anything out about your out-of-state jobs? Well, I got a pretty uh, decent offer from Miami. Good money. You'll take it, won't you? I told him I'd let him know this week. What do you have against Miami? Not a thing. It's as good as any place else. I'm surprised you didn't accept it right away. <sighs> yeah, I'm kind of surprised myself. Um, attention, everyone. Excuse me. Thank you. The uh, rehearsal is about to begin. So with the aid of the good reverend here and with enormous personal pleasure, I'm going to tell you all where to go. <laughs> First of all, the bridal party, the bridesmaids, Ingrid and Heather, up here, uh, the matron of honor, Kelly, and of course the lovely bride, the lovely bride, up here, is that right, reverend? <clears throat> oh, that's correct. And the ushers, uh, Danny and Cruz, that's you, down here, and the, uh, the best man, Ted, who is also the best little brother that anyone could ever have. They're down near the altar. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Now, will the bride's father be giving her away? If so, he should be standing with her. He won't be able to make it. That's all right. I have all sorts of contingency plans for all sorts of contingencies. Cruz, would you give the bride away? It's sort of a symbolic gesture. I'll be happy to escort Santana down the aisle, Mason. Well, I believe there was some mention of a ring bearer. <clears throat> yes, Brandon Capo, but he's not feeling too well tonight, so he's being looked after by the bride's mother. Is there someone who could stand in for uh, the... Oh, yes, 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 me. Uh, but you'll have to rehearse your own. <clears throat> no, no, that's all right. I have a substitute. If you could have your uh, attention just a moment, just be patient. Here we are. This is the groom, Mason Two. He'll be all right. Grooms don't have much to do anyway. They just sort of... Stand around and look superfluous. <laughs> okay, are we um, are we all ready now? Everyone, everyone into position. I'm I'm the ring bearer. All right, ladies, here we go. Drum, bum, da dum, 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 da dum, 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 da dum, dum, da dum, dum, da dum. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, at this point, I will explain that you have uh, both written some personal words that you wish to say to each other. Uh, Santana, I'll ask you to go first. Oh, I I'm sorry, but I don't have anything to add to the ceremony. Well, just say anything, Santana. If you get stuck, um, read your grocery list. It'll probably be more personal than anything you have to say to me. Knock it off. Well, I, for one, have a few words to say, though they're not quite polished to their usual luster. Marriage, an ancient institution to which my lovely companion and I are about to be committed. Much has been written about the joys of marriage. <clears throat> I'll have to take them on faith, because personally, I've never seen them. Point it up, Mason. And in conclusion, I'd like to thank all the little people who made this uh, impossible day possible. Namely, my father and my ersatz brother, Channing. Between the two, they gave us the bride and the child all in a one-time-only package uh, deal. Jason, get on with it before we all cut out. <clears throat> and in conclusion, I would like to add one word. Love. That elusive emotion. I'm happy to say that both my darling fiancé and I know what it means to love deeply. Unfortunately... We don't love each other because we're both in love with other people, but what the heck? You can't have everything, as they keep telling us. Somebody's got to shut him up. Danny, tell the maitre d' to serve dinner. The rehearsal's over. Can I talk to you for a second, please? Now, if you want to trash yourself in front of all these people, be my guest. But don't. I repeat, do not drag Santana down with you. Cruz, I'll handle it. Don't interfere. Don't interfere. You enjoying this? Mm. Oh, the great protector. You know, I'm getting a little sick of that act, Cruz. I'm the one who volunteered for duty on the front lines, not you. Why don't you go sit down and have your dinner? Try not to choke on your moral indignation. Well, are we almost there? Wherever there is. Very soon. I can't believe that Cruz actually admitted to you that he was in Hawaii with Eden. They're not even trying to cover it up. 
What? So they think they can get away with just anything? Well, we're going to prove them wrong. Aren't we? I guess so. No guessing about it. Their Hawaiian honeymoon is about to come to an abrupt end. I don't like mysteries, Kirk. So why don't you just tell me what it is you're planning and exactly what you expect of me? I expect you to be my partner in every sense of the word. It probably means you expect me to do all the dirty work and take all the risks. Well, why should I? Gina, we're in this equally. The risk is shared. Not if I'm the one that has to carry out all your scheming. There are reasons why that's necessary. Yeah, so you don't have to get your hands dirty. Well, let me tell you something, Kirk. You're a lot better qualified to do the job than I am. I've got that certain look in your eye. I've only met a few men that have had that look. And they have all been killers. Hear ye, hear ye, all able-bodied men are hereby impressed into duty at the bachelor party, which will take place immediately after dinner. All able-bodied women, too, since there aren't enough men to really make much of a party. Now, I can see that my best man, Ted, is straining at the bit to propose a toast to me and my lovely bride, whose downcast eyes and silence speak volumes, which no doubt I will be reading for years to come. Oh, okay, Ted, go ahead, you can talk. <clears throat> uh, well, uh, since I've known both of you all my life, you know what a great team will make. Yeah, um, I, I just hope that they have a very happy life together. They're, they're very good people. They should be very um, good together. Come on, Ted. Don't be so cautious. We'll be the couple of the decade. Mason, do you want to make this little toast? Well, yeah, but it's traditional for the best man. Well, then do. let me do it. Okay, go uh, go right ahead. Wh why don't you say that this is a match made, if not in heaven, at least in Santa Barbara, and that with her brains and my beauty, there'll be no stopping us. Hey, Tana. I'm sorry, I, I, I can't do this. I apologize. I'll just, uh, I'll see you at the wedding. That makes two of us. <laughs> I wonder what got into them. Well, that's all right, because old Mason, too, here is a man of many words, and I'm sure he'd like to say something. Hello, Mason. Wouldn't you like to propose a toast to the happy couple? <clears throat> Can I eat it afterwards? I am hungry. <clears throat> now, don't be greedy. Just say a few nice words. All right. Money and sex. Oh, you're an insensitive bore. I can tell that I'm going to have to propose a toast. And this one will be to that neglected duo, our bridesmaids, who have been a couple of real troopers this evening. And as a consolation prize, they get to spend one day each of my honeymoon with me. My bride won't mind because she gets to share her marriage bed with my cut-out buddy here. Uh, excuse me, Santana. I think it's time to... Uh, yes, I have oh. obligations elsewhere. Uh, oh, I can see the ship is sinking. Well, you've outdone yourself again, Mason, and I am ashamed of being in the same family with you. <clears throat> well, looks like the party's over, ladies. See you next year. What is it you wanted to talk to me about, Nick? I want the money you owe me. All of it. Okay, just so that I don't unintentionally cheat you out of anything. How much is all of it? $2,200 a year for four years. Interest included? Interest included. The figure is close up to $10,000, but I'm not going to look at the difference. $10,000 it is. There's one condition. Kelly is not to know anything about this. Is this the open and honest relationship you've been talking to me about? Do you agree or do you not? Sure. You know, a lot easier for me than it is for you. I also have one stipulation. And what is that? That after this, it's understood between us that I owe you nothing. No sentimental obligations, no gratitude on either side. You got it. These aren't just empty words, Nick. 
I mean what I say. I know pretty much of what I'm bailing you out of. This check is your due. But after this, I reserve the, the right to turn you down. Flat. It's okay. It won't happen again. You don't have anything else I want. I have what you want. This concludes our business. We're good. You'd like it to be. But it isn't over, brother. Why didn't you tell me we were coming to the Capwell Boathouse? The no longer used Capwell Boathouse, Gina. This is perfect. For what? Well, we can't be heard or seen out here. By the time Eden's body drifts back to shore, no one will have any idea how long she's been dead. You've forgotten one small detail, Kirk. How are we going to get Eden out here? Well, that's your job, Gina. Part of it. What am I supposed to do? Lure her out here and dump her in a drink? Yeah, that's the general idea. You're the big, strong man, Kirk. Why don't you do it yourself? Besides, it won't work. Eden's too strong a swimmer. I've seen her. It'll work. But she's already dead. What are you doing? Are you crazy? Not at all. I just picked it up yesterday. Nice, huh? It's got a silencer on it. Just in case. Stop pointing that at me, Kirk. We're bound to be Regina. Now, you're the only one who knows what I'm planning to do to Eden. But I'm the only one who knows for sure that you tried to kill Cece. If you don't cooperate, if you give me any more trouble, I'll kill you. Hey, and this one's for you, too. Not that you deserve to be rewarded. You were obnoxious at the dinner today. My poor bride never even got her toast. Well... <clears throat> I'm going to give her one now. I don't want to hear any more smart talk from you. That's better. Here we go. <sighs> what was I toasting? Oh, yes. To the light of my life, Santana, Latter-day Saint and Martyr. Thank you for teaching me to understand why Joan of Arc never had a husband. <clears throat> don't look at me that way. There are very good reasons why we're getting married. I'll think of them in a minute. Brandon. Brandon, the reason we're joining in holy deadlock, wedlock, is for Brandon's sake. I have to keep telling myself that. You're falling asleep. Am I boring you? How about uh, another, whoo, another rousing toast? This one will be to Mary Duvall. She's the one who taught me the beauty and simplicity of throwing my life away. But Mary, well, she lives in a state of grace, doesn't she? That's why being close to her is so magical. If only... I were dying of a terminal illness or something. I'm sure she would have married me then. Maybe I am. There's a strange numbness right in here. And it seems to be spreading all over. Well, Mary will be so happy. I can't wait to tell her. <clears throat> Excuse me. Look, put that gun down. I can't think straight. There's not that much to think about, Gina. You need me. Even if I kept quiet about Cece, you still wouldn't stand a chance of getting Brandon back without my help. You promised to help me get Brandon back. Well, I, I said that I would. And I will, Gina. Now, look, if you go along with me, I'll do everything I can to talk Cece into that. To change his mind, to offset the damage that Eden's already done. That's what I wanted to hear. 
Now, I want to hear you promise that Eden is going to die. Don't hedge on me, Gina. I want you to say that. We are going to kill Eden together. All right. Of course. And you're right, this is a good place. But I want to know about... about the part before she falls in the water. Well, you're going to shoot her, Gene. I'm going to what? Yeah. One bullet through the heart. Come on. And you're going to take her body, shove it into the water. Well, why do I have to do that? I mean, why me? Because otherwise I'm going to shoot both of you. Agreed, Gina? It out. How much of that garbage were you supposed to take? As much as I have to. That's a good attitude. I know you like to see me proud and strong. But when it comes to my son or my lousy pride, there is no contest. How long do you think you'll be able to live with a lush who humiliates you every chance he gets? I repeat, as long as I have to. Mason isn't going to be like that all the time. It's hard for him, too. And how do you think Brandon's going to feel when he grows up and realizes what happened here? You think he's going to be happy to know that you did this for him? Yes, because I'm going to give him a happy life. I'm going to do that for him, Cruz. Now, I have to go back there. Don't go back. He might change his mind. He might back out. You know he'd do it if I pushed him too far. It would be a blessing. No, it wouldn't. I'm not going to stand here and watch you do this to yourself. You're not going to watch me do this to myself because you're going to be gone. To Miami or the moon or wherever you can run to. Now, what am I supposed to do? Just stick around and wait for Mr. Wright to come along? Well, my son is being raised by somebody else in someone else's home? I have been waiting all of my life. All the men that I've loved have been in love with someone else. And besides, even if I do wait, how do I know that Cece isn't going to change his mind? I can't take that chance. This is the closest that I've ever been to getting my son, and I'm not going to lose him again. Now, I just pray, I pray to God that Mason won't change his mind, because he is the only choice I've got. I've got no other choice. Yes, you do. You can marry me. Tonight, comedy starts with Jack Klugman and you again. Then, can Valerie fight for that influence Uncle Rambo has over her kids, followed by the searing conclusion of Dress Grave. 